Michael Weber, Artistic Director of Chicago's Porchlight Music Theatre. Opening on Broadway at the Lyric Theatre December 2nd, 1912, The Firefly was the first production written by composer Rudolf Frimmel with a libretto by Otto Harbach. It was announced in early 1912 that Italian-born singing diva Emma Trentini would be starring on Broadway in a new production by composer Victor Herbert with lyrics by Otto Harbach entitled The Firefly. Shortly before the show's writing, Trentini appeared in a special performance of Herbert's Naughty Marietta, conducted by the composer himself. When Trentini refused to sing the song Italian Street Song for the encore, an enraged Herbert stormed out of the orchestra pit, refusing any further work with Trentini. Arthur Hammerstein, the Firefly's producer and uncle of Oscar Hammerstein II, frantically began to search for another composer. Not finding anyone established who could compose as well as Herbert, Hammerstein settled on the almost unknown Rudolf Frimmel because of his classical training. After a month of work, Frimmel produced the score for what would be his first theatrical success. The Firefly was followed by 32 more Frimmel productions, but it remained one of his most popular. The story concerns a young Italian girl who is a street singer in New York. She disguises herself and serves as a cabin boy on a ship to Bermuda, where she falls in love. Complications arise, and eventually she becomes a grand opera diva. The original Broadway production was warmly received and successfully transferred after Christmas to the Casino Theater for extended performances. A 1937 MGM film version starring Jeanette MacDonald and Alan Jones used most of the songs but had a new plot set in Spain during the time of Napoleon. The piece became one of the more frequently revived Frimmel works, but was not given a complete recording until 2006. Here on the February 25th, 1952 episode of The Railroad Hour are the stars Dorothy Kirsten and Gordon McRae in The Firefly. Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, The Railroad Hour. <laughs> our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents one of your all-time operetta favorites, The Firefly, starring Gordon McRae and his celebrated guest, Dorothy Kirsten. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroad. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and a good good evening, ladies and gentlemen. In tonight's operetta, my name is Jack Travers, and Dorothy Kirsten is Nina, a street singer known as the Firefly. saw Nina in the colorful section of New York City known as Little Italy. While my fiance Geraldine Van Der, was shopping, I wandered over to a crowd gathered on the opposite corner. And there was Nina. Ladies fair, if you care, dear, delightful wedding steps to take. Angle not, angle not, clearly, the stone has hanged on all the Quick, turn a trick, hurry, whatever it will do. 
Beautiful voice, young lady. Thank you. You're very kind. I've never seen you in our neighborhood before. Well, I've never been here before. I must come again. I wish you would. Yeah, it'll be some time, though. I'm sailing for Bermuda this evening. Oh? Yes, on my fiancé's yacht. I see. Oh, here you are. Hurry along, Jack. We're sailing in an hour. Geraldine, have you heard this girl sing? She has a wonderful voice. Uh, what's your name, Miss... Really, Jack? <sighs> Names are hardly a consequence between you and me, Senora. I am called the Firefly. Bye. She ran away and disappeared around the corner. I returned to the yacht with Geraldine. But I had looked into the eyes, for a moment touched the hand, and glimpsed a promise in the fleeting smile of the Firefly. I told myself that somehow, somewhere, someday I would see her again. The promise in a woman's smile ah, who, who can explain A prophecy of trust
We sailed for Bermuda that same evening, Geraldine and her parents and I, on the Van Der family yacht. Just before we put out to sea, the cabin boy signed on, a tiny, lively little urchin named Tony. And I couldn't sleep that first night out, and neither could the cabin boy, I guess. We met on the top deck. He was leaning against a mast, and his eyes were on the stars, and he was singing an impudent little song. When I made Quite a singer, Tony. Oh, Signora Jack. Tell me, what in the world does a youngster like you know about what to do when a maid comes knocking at your heart? Oh, in Italy, even the children love to sing love songs. And, and of course, I'm a pretty smart young fellow. Yeah, you sure are. Tell you, Tony, give me some more advice about love, all right? Is there anything more important than love? Oh, nothing is more important than love, Signora. To find it is to enter into heaven. To marry without it is to die. If I loved a lady, I'd know just what to say to her. In my garden, all of us, let us fly. Oh, the drowsy blue lagoon. And float on the yellow tide. Where sleeps the dreamy moon. I'll fashion a crown. on the sea. It is? How did you happen to sign on here as cabin boy? Well, the boy who was once supposed to come, well, he decided not to. His name is Tony, too. So I just came in his place. Tony, you're from the Italian Quarter. You must know the Firefly. Oh, maybe I do. <laughs> what is she like, Signora Jack? Oh, I saw her only once. She's wonderful. Perhaps you'll find her again. Hey, yeah. eh, Signora? <laughs> I'm afraid not, Tony. But I'll remember her as long as I live. Love is like a firefly that 
glimmers by and dies while it is gleaming. Therefore, when you see it dry, you must be very spry, never sly, never shy. When within her twinkling eyes, you see the tender We'll return to the second act of The Firefly in just a moment. Listen to this. That's the kind of roar a guided missile makes as it builds up its tremendous driving force and zooms skyward, soon disappearing from view. For traveling at supersonic speed, a guided missile accelerates up to 3,500 miles per hour. In a matter of minutes, it has passed the outer limits of Earth's atmosphere and has reached the very gates of outer space. Already these fantastic weapons have indicated their worth to national defense, and their peacetime use stands as a real challenge to science. Back of these guided missiles is a lot of research and engineering know-how. Also back of each is a lot of railroad transportation. For to make the steel that goes into the missile, it takes tremendous quantities of iron ore, coal, and limestone coming from many sections of the country, converging at America's big steel-producing centers. To carry these varied materials to mill and then carry the finished steel to the missile manufacturer, dependable railroad transportation is essential. Then there are electronic circuits required to launch, steer, and explode the missile. The manganese catalyst, the hydrogen peroxide, the pyrotechnic flares, the liquid oxygen and alcohol, all needed to power the missile's flight. And these, too, are assembled by the railroad. Finally, the delivery of the finished missile itself is a railroad job. Yes, whether it is in moving a guided missile or any of the other thousands of things needed for America's defense, only the railroads can do the big and complete transportation job that is required. To meet expanding transportation demands of national defense and our civilian commerce, the railroads are improving their facilities in every way. If they are able to obtain adequate materials and earn the money they must have, the railroads will be able to do a still better job of meeting America's transportation needs. Hi, this is Porchlight Music Theater Design Associate Ani Wright. If you value programming like this, please consider making a donation today at porchlightmusictheater.org. We appreciate your consideration and hope you enjoy the show. And now here is the second act of The Firefly, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, Dorothy Kirsten. Love is like a firefly that glimmers by and dies while it is During those days in my fiancé's yacht, I was dreaming. I was trying to keep my mind on reality and Geraldine, but I kept thinking of another girl, a girl I'd seen for only a few moments, the Firefly. Jack, what's the matter with you? What do you mean, Geraldine? Well, you've hardly spoken to me the entire voyage. And I'm sorry. Are you angry about something? No, no, of course not. Have I done anything to upset you? No. Then what is wrong? I told you nothing's wrong. Jack, it isn't necessary to raise your voice. I told you nothing was wrong, but you keep harping. I... Harping? Well, I certainly won't harp any longer. If you're determined to be in a bad humor, go ahead and be in one. When you're ready to apologize, I shall be in my cabin. <laughs> All right, Tony, what's so funny? You are, Senor Jack. If you could see your face... <laughs> Oh, get along, Tony, will you? Go sweep the deck or whatever cabin boys are supposed to do. You're being very naughty. Has someone been such a naughty boy? Oh. Uh-huh. 
sympathy, sympathy, just sympathy. I won't think you are free. I will not scold or say you are bold when you treat me. the man should show sympathy for him, Signora Jack. Well, really, Tony, it isn't Geraldine's fault. I've been impossible the last few days. Well, maybe when we get to Bermuda. Oh, look, Signora Jack, that beautiful isle on the horizon. That's where we're going, Tony. That's Bermuda. Oh, it's lovely. I think everything is going to be all right for you now. Well, maybe it will, Tony. I, I hope so. Pull away that line. Pull away that line. Pull aboard. Pull aboard. Away for a lovely ocean cruise. Get by the gentle breezes. How it eases, gently pleases all. The Bermuda who'd refuse The land of the mermaid flowers Sunshine showers, wondrous flowers That's the way, that's the way We hate delay We hate delay Away to Bermuda Isle of Flowers There Bermuda But things weren't any better in Bermuda. I began to feel more and more that I couldn't marry Geraldine. I moped around the island, actually trying to avoid her. And then... Jack! Oh, thank heavens I found you. Something terrible has happened. That cabin boy, that, that Tony, he's wanted in New York for being a pickpocket. Our Tony? Oh, I don't believe it. Must be the other Tony, the one, the one whose place he took. Well, it doesn't matter because that isn't half of it. Tony isn't a boy at all. He's a girl, and he isn't Tony. Wait a minute, I'm a little confused, Geraldine. Say that over again. Tony isn't Tony. He's a girl dressed up like a boy, an Italian street singer. Italian street singer? Yes, I think it's that girl we saw in New York, the one they call the Firefly. The Firefly. Where is he now, Geraldine? I mean, she, the Firefly. Well, I imagine she's down on the wharf trying to get passage home. Naturally, we dismissed her at once. May I beg the same favor, Geraldine? What favor? Dismissal. Jack! Where are you going? I'm going down to the harbor to see if there is a day when your ship comes in. Down at the harbor, there was the girl whose songs and whose smile had changed my whole life. She was dressed like a boy, sitting on the wharf, just looking out to sea. Hello, Tony. The name is Nina, in case you really want to know. Uh, the name is Gianina Mia. Mine. What are you doing down here, Signora Jack? Well, at last, someone told me where I could find the firefly. And now that I've found you, we're going home to New York. 
I'm never going to let you out of my sight again. Oh, how are we going to get back? I have no money for passage. Well, maybe I haven't either, but a little thing like that shouldn't stop a street singer. Just watch me. Hey, everybody. Gather round, gather round. Who are we serenading? Why, that mule, of course. <laughs> Give a listen, Senor Donkey, and help us make some money. <laughs> a song in the air, but the fair senorita doesn't seem to care for the song in the air. So I'll sing to the mule, if you're sure she won't think that I am just a fool, serenading a She looks so carefully to each of the songs you play. La bella senorita. Si, si, mi muchachita. She loves to sing it to you, Polly. She knew the way. Thank you. Thank you, my friends. Thank you very much. You see, darling, that's how we get the money for the passage home. But what about Geraldine? Well, remember what you said. Nothing is more important than love. To find it is to enter heaven. To marry without it is to die. You told me what you'd say if you loved a lady. Now, Nina, I want to say it to you. Lovely Dorothy Kirsten will be back in just a moment. The Firefly with book and lyrics by Otto Harbach and music by Rudolph Frimmel was adapted for the Railroad Hour by Gene Holloway. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. The guided missiles we talked about earlier on the Railroad Hour represent a big research job and a big transportation job. It is certainly a dramatic example of the progress being made possible by scientific research. Research has also been instrumental in making the American railroad system the finest in the world. And continuous study in every phase of railroading is being carried forward more rapidly, on more fronts than ever before. And this research is resulting in even better transportation for all of us. Now here again is lovely Dorothy Kirsten. Thank you, Gordon. 
<laughs> it was a thrill singing the Firefly with you tonight. But tell me, why is your bag all packed? Where are you going? Well, I'm catching the next train for Nashville, Tennessee, Dorothy. Nashville's a beautiful city, Gordon. I've been there often, but what's the occasion? Well, this Thursday is the opening night of the brand new Tennessee Theater. And I'm going to help celebrate opening night. Oh, give my regards to all the music lovers, and there are a host of them in that lovely city of universities. Well, I'll do it, Dorothy. You know, we're expecting you back two weeks from tonight for Jerome Kern's Cat and the Fiddle. I've already marked it in my calendar. What's on the show train next Monday night, Gordon? Well, Lucille Norman joins us for another thrilling Frimmel operetta, Dorothy. The White Eagle. That should be a feather in your cap. Night, Gordy. <laughs> All aboard. Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night, or next Thursday night, if you're going to be in Nashville, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Firefly was presented by Special Arrangement with Century Library Incorporated of New York. Gordon McRae will soon be seen starring in Warner Brothers' About Face. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. The preceding was transcribed. Stay tuned for Lucille Cummings on the Telephone Hour on NBC. In addition to her operatic activities, today's star Dorothy Kirsten sang on radio with Nelson Eddy, Jack Benny, Perry Como, and Frank Sinatra, with whom she co-starred on the show Light Up Time. She also appeared in two films, Mr. Music, opposite Bing Crosby in 1950, and The Great Caruso, opposite Mario Lanza in 1951. In 1965, she appeared on the Firestone album series, Your Favorite Christmas Music, Volume 4, singing I Wonder As I Wander and Joy to the World. While today's composer became famous with this, his Broadway debut, book writer-lyricist Otto Harbach, still known in 1912 as Otto Hauerbach, collaborated with many of the leading Broadway composers of the early 20th century, including Jerome Kern, Vincent Yeomans, George Gershwin, and Sigmund Romberg, among others. Harbach believed that music, lyrics, and story should be closely connected, and as Oscar Hammerstein II's mentor, he encouraged Hammerstein to write musicals in this manner. Harbach is considered one of the first great Broadway lyricists, and he helped raise the status of the lyricist in an age more concerned with music, spectacle, and stars. Some of his more famous lyrics are in the songs Smoke Gets in Your Eyes, Indian Love Call, and I Won't Dance. Theaters across the country need your support now, more than ever. We hope you'll consider a donation to Porchlight Music Theater today. Just go to porchlightmusictheater.org. Until next time on Classic Musicals from the Golden Age of Radio, I'm Michael Weber. Michael Weber.